In this video, I want to explain the difference between apoptosis and autophagy. So apoptosis is commonly referred to as programmed cell death. So when a cell goes through apoptosis, it's intentionally killing itself. And this isn't always a bad thing. Sometimes cells intentionally go through apoptosis where they go through this programmed cell death. How about autophagy? So autophagy is when a living cell recycles certain of its cellular components. For example, maybe the cell, this living cell goes through autophagy where it recycles the mitochondria. Maybe this is a defective mitochondria, so the cell goes through autophagy where it breaks down this mitochondria and reuses those atoms and components for other purposes. So now let's go into more detail on apoptosis. So let's say we have this cell, let's say we have a mitochondria. We know most cells have many mitochondria, but I'm just gonna focus on one. Inside this mitochondria, we have these cytochrome C molecules. So now I wanna introduce you to these really important proteins, these Bax and Bax proteins. So these are really important proteins. Normally they're inactivated. So normally they're inactivated. However, when we activate these proteins, then we activate apoptosis. But normally we're not going through apoptosis because normally these guys are inactivated. However, if we activate them, now they trigger apoptosis. So how? Well, once they're activated, now they bind to the mitochondria. Now when they bind to this outer membrane of the mitochondria, they make it more permeable. Now that it's more permeable, these cytochrome C molecules can diffuse outside of the mitochondria. So when the cytochrome C molecules diffuse outside of the mitochondria into the cytoplasm, they run into these sets of proteins. When they run into these proteins, they essentially form a complex referred to as the apoptosome. Once this apoptosome is, is established, now it can essentially activate caspase enzymes. And once these caspase enzymes are activated, now the cell goes through apoptosis. So the point is, once you activate these Bax Bax proteins, they essentially activate this cascade that leads to apoptosis. So activate these, these, these Bax Bax proteins that leads to apoptosis. But what are these caspase enzymes? Well, essentially they're enzymes that have this, this cysteine residue. And this cysteine residue with this, this thiol group can act as a nucleophile. And when it acts as a nucleophile, it hydrolyzes these peptide bonds next to these aspartate residues. So that's what these caspase enzymes do. They, they essentially hydrolyze these peptide bonds next to these aspartate residues. And that's why they're called caspases. C, because they, these caspases have this cysteine residue, and the asp, because they specifically hydrolyze these peptide bonds next to aspartate residues. But again, these caspases essentially break down and hydrolyze proteins, which, which then activate more caspases, which activate other compounds that essentially lead to apoptosis. The, the main point I'm trying to make is that these Bax Bax proteins are really important. They regulate apoptosis. Again, normally they're inactivated. However, if you activate them, if for whatever reason they get activated, the cell goes through apoptosis. But again, most cells aren't going through apoptosis. Most cells aren't going through programmed cell death and killing themselves. So normally this Bax is inactivated. Normally it's inhibited. So normally when these Bax Bax proteins are inhibited, there's no apoptosis, which is normally the case. However, so again, the cell usually has a balance of these pro-apoptotic forces and these anti-apoptotic forces. But normally it's these anti-apoptotic forces that are dominating, essentially inhibiting these guys, and then there's no apoptosis. And when you think of anti-apoptotic factors, you should think of these BCL2 proteins. So these BCL2 proteins are usually inhibiting this Bax Bax inhibiting apoptosis. Now there's no apoptosis. So therefore these are anti-apoptotic. This BCL2 is anti-apoptotic. However, if for whatever reason, maybe we have excess pro-apoptotic forces, they're going to activate this Bax Bax. And when these pro-apoptotic factors activate this Bax Bax, now they get activated. Now they trigger apoptosis. So what are some of these pro-apoptotic factors? Well, one example is most cells have these death receptors and there's different kinds. For example, FAS is one example, but the point is this, this, these cells have these death receptors. And when these death receptors bind their ligands, it activates a signal transduction pathway that activates these Bax Bax proteins, which trigger apoptosis. And that's why they're called death receptors because when their ligand binds, they activate apoptosis and the cell dies.
So that's one way you can activate apoptosis and activate these back specs. Another way is let's say the cell has a lot of stress. Maybe there's a lot of DNA damage, or maybe the cell's under very extreme hypoxic conditions, or maybe there's a lot of oxidative stress. So if this cell is going through a lot of stress, a lot of DNA damage, and a lot of oxidative stress, then this cell should kill itself. We don't want this DNA damage, and we don't want the cell to propagate, made, making more cells with this, replicating this DNA damage. And again, if, if the cell has a lot of oxidative stress, that's going to cause more DNA damage. So if a cell has excess cellular stresses, those stresses also activate these back backs proteins, which also lead to apoptosis, which, which makes sense. So this is good. This apoptosis can be good. A cell should kill itself if it has a lot of stresses. And another way are these cytotoxic T lymphocytes. So these, this branch of the immune system, the, these, these lymph, this adaptive branch of the immune system with these lymphocytes, these cytotoxic T lymphocytes are cytotoxic. They can kill cells. And they don't just kill any arbitrary cells. Usually they do it if maybe the cell's infected with the virus or maybe it's showing signs of cancer. But these cytotoxic T lymphocytes can essentially activate these back back proteins, essentially telling the cell to kill itself, to go through apoptosis. And the way the cytotoxic T lymphocytes do this is first they release these porphyrins, which make this, this opening where now they can release granzyme B, which activates these back back proteins, which activate apoptosis. Now the cell kills itself. So we see there are these different ways we can activate apoptosis. And this is referred to as the extrinsic pathway. It's extrinsic. It, it's these factors outside of the cell that bind to the cell that activate apoptosis. There's also the intrinsic pathway. It's these factors inside of the cell, the DNA damage and the oxidative stress. So there's this intrinsic pathway that activates these back back proteins leading to apoptosis. And there's the granzyme B pathway, which is again through these, these cytotoxic T lymphocytes, which, which activate apoptosis. So there are these three different ways we can activate apoptosis and, and convince the cell to kill itself. So again, the point is these BCL2 and uh, there are some other examples are proteins that are inhibiting these back backs and inhibiting apoptosis. And normally that's a situation. Normally cells are inhibiting apoptosis and surviving. However, if whatever reason, and you only need one of these, whether it's the extrinsic or maybe the granzyme B, as long as the cell deals with one of these pathways, then it, as long as it either way activates these back specs, then the cell commits apoptosis and kills itself. So again, that's what apoptosis is. So once the cell activates apoptosis, essentially what happens is the cell starts to degrade all these components. It starts to degrade the nuclear envelope and degrade its, its genome and degrade all these other organelles. And now all these, all, these, all these components of the cell are completely degraded into their respective amino acids and carbohydrates and, and, and lipids. So now that the cell has gone through apoptosis and really hydrolyzed all of its components, now immune cells can come along and start, and start eating up and using these components. For example, neutrophils and macrophages can start eating up this cell that committed apoptosis and use these amino acids and proteins and, and, and lipids, nucleic acids, for, to reuse them. So this is apoptosis, when the cell goes through programmed cell death and commits suicide and kills itself. So how about autophagy? So we already explained what autophagy, but a really crucial part of autophagy are these lysosomes. So these lysosomes have these, these hydrolase enzymes, and there's lots of different types of hydrolase enzymes, like proteases and glycosylases and lipases and nucleases. So these are very dangerous enzymes. These are very dangerous hydrolase enzymes because they essentially break macromolecules, for example. If, if inside this lysosome there's, there's a peptide or protein, these proteases will hydrolyze and degrade this protein. Or maybe, maybe some kind of carbo polysaccharide enters this lysosome. Well, again, these glycosylases will, will hydrolyze and break these glycosidic linkages, freeing up uh, uh, carbohydrates. And also we have these nuclease enzymes that will degrade nucleic acids, and we have these lipase enzymes that will degrade lipids. So again, these lysosomes are essentially can, can degrade all macromolecules. Again, whether it's a carbohydrate or a protein or whatever, we have these hydrolases that will degrade these macromolecules. And once the lysosome degrades these macromolecules, now we can recycle and reuse these macromolecules. We can reuse these carbohydrates or we can reuse these amino acids.
So we see these lysosomes can be very dangerous. If you throw in a protein or a carbohydrate or a lipid inside these lysosomes, the lysosomes will degrade them and hydrolyze it and, and, and break it up. So, so these lysosomes can be very dangerous. However, we can use them under certain situations. So with autophagy, there are three major types of autophagy. There's macro autophagy. So let's say we have some worn out organelles, or maybe we have some misfolded proteins. This is bad. We need to get rid of these. So we can get rid of these through macro autophagy. So essentially what happens is this phospholipid membrane starts to develop called a phagophore. So it starts to develop and essentially it forms what's referred to as an autophagosome around these unfolded proteins or these worn out organelles. So once we form this autophagosome, then it essentially fuses with the lysosome. So once it fuses with this lysosome, so it fuses with the lysosome, then all these hydrolase enzymes are released inside here. So once these hydrolase enzymes are released inside of here, we know what's going to happen. They're going to they're going to break up this protein and they're going to break up these organelles and they're going to essentially hydrolyze and, and degrade all these components. And now once they're fully degraded in this auto lysosome, because again, it, it's formed with the lysosome, once it's degraded all these components, now the cell can reuse these components. It can reuse these carbohydrates and amino acids and etc. For, for other purposes. So again, it's, it's so that's what autophagy is. It's when we recycle worn out organelles or misfolded proteins and etc. So this is specifically is macroautophagy. But there's also something called microautophagy. So in microautophagy, essentially what happens is we have a lysosome and let's say we have something that we want to degrade. Essentially what happens is inside the lysosome, it starts to take it in and then it develops this, this vesicle. So it develops this vesicle, then eventually the vesicle degrades. Now once the vesicle degrades, now all these hydrolase enzymes can have access. Now they can have access to whatever this was, whether it was a protein or, or whatever whatever component it was, and now we can degrade it into its, its monomers and its, its subunits, which we can reuse and recycle. So we can recycle and reuse these components. So that's microautophagy. So there's also something called chaperone-mediated autophagy, and this is a little more specific. So let's say we have a protein. As long as this protein or peptide has this very specific sequence, it can go through chaperone-mediated autophagy, where essentially these lysosomes will specifically degrade proteins that have this particular sequence, a lysine residue, and, and these particular residue, this particular sequence. So essentially what happens is we have these chaperones and these heat shock proteins that recognize polypeptides with this sequence. And once they recognize them, they deliver them to the lysosome. So once they deliver them to the lysosome, now the, this, this peptide can enter inside the lysosome. And once it fully enters, now the lysosome with all of its hydrolase enzymes and proteases can degrade this protein. So now it degrades the protein into its, its respective amino acid monomer subunits. And now we can reuse those, those amino acids for, for building other proteins and new proteins. So that's what autophagy is. Autophagy is when we recycle used up proteins or, or, or organelles or, or other components. And again, there's lots of types of autophagy, but specifically there's something called ribophagy is when we reuse ribosomes. When we take ribosomes, we degrade them to reuse their subunits and, and components. There's also lipophagy, which is, is again autophagy with, with lipids. Or, and again, so we have pexophagy pexophagy, which is again, is essentially autophagy of peroxisomes. We have mitophagy when we essentially break up these mitochondria and break them up into their components to reuse those components. And there's chlorophagy, which clearly humans don't do that. That's something plants do. But again, so autophagy is when a living cell, essentially it's self cannibalism. It, it, it's when it eats parts of its components, and, and it can also do this for energy. You can essentially, for example, maybe this, this, this cell is under extreme nutrient uh, deprivation and, and, and in a starvation state. It can essentially maybe go through, uh, it, can, it can break down some of these components. It can break down, for example, it could break down a protein and hydrolyze those bonds and essentially oxidize that protein for energy. So again, autophagy can also happen during starvation conditions where we essentially it eats itself. We know there's there's energy in the macromolecules in the cell, so we can start breaking down those components of the cell and, and oxidizing them oxidizing them for energy.
So autophagy has lots of different components of it, but again, it's different from apoptosis.